Hello and welcome to this meeting of the Aaron and her missionaries. We are so glad that you've decided to take a moment and listen to what we believe God has to say to you through this ministry. We are a group of people that believe that Jesus is even at the doors and God has called us as missionaries to alarm the church, to shout the warning that the church might see what is really going on in the world, that they might shout the warning to a lost and a dying world. We are the generation, my friends, that have lived. I heard a guy say the other day, I wish I could live in Bible days. We're living in Bible days, my friends. We are living in a day that no other generation has seen because we are living in a day of convergence of all prophecies being fulfilled concerning the imminent return of the Lord Jesus Christ, which means that the tribulation is not far off, the revealing of the Antichrist is not far off, you see. What a wonderful, exciting time to be alive. Amen? Amen. So we want to make sure that when God's book writes down our history, that we are found on His side of it, doing what He has called us to do. And we thank God that he has uh, opened our eyes to the lateness of the hour in which we live. Uh, all of you that uh, pray for us and you know us and you, uh, are, are, you're aware of us and for you that send financial support, we want to show you some of the fruit of your prayers and uh, the money that you sent us. We, we have been able to send a total now. We just sent another $500. Every time we scrape together $500, we try to send it over there or we do. And we have sent 4,500 over there as of yet. And uh, we've seen at least 31 people saved, maybe more. But I just wanted to show you a picture uh, with Pastor Gershon Bayoya and those that have just received the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll, uh, maybe later on, uh, next week or two, we'll show you some of them getting baptized on videos. But here's some pictures of those that your support and your love and your graciousness has Listen, you're going to run into these people in glory. Amen. And they're going to walk up and shake your hand and say thank you Amen. for giving to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Look at those precious, precious souls. Yeah. Just one of them would make worth everything Amen. that we've done. Look yes. at them. Look at the next video. We've got several. There they are. Listen, Aaron and her missionaries helped somehow. Yes. For these people to hear the message yes. that Jesus is even Praise at the God. doors. Amen. Amen. Yes. Praise God. We give you all the glory, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. We thank you for everything that you've done. Amen. Amen. All right, I want to preach to you for a few minutes tonight uh, on the subject America and prophecy. We've been looking at Deuteronomy chapter 28 and. Uh, We've seen there in Deuteronomy 28 that God said to, nation, to the nation of Israel, I bless you if you do what I tell you, if you listen to me and do what I tell you, amen? amen. But if you don't, you're going to suffer the consequences. It's up to you. So we, this is lesson number four, and we have likened America uh, not, uh, to Judah and everything that happened to them because they were the greatest nation. They didn't listen to God. They, they turned from God, they forgot God, and they suffered the consequences. And in a lot of ways, we can see a picture of America. America is not mentioned specifically in the Scripture, but all nations are mentioned. We're going to show you in a minute uh, that, indeed, we're not reaching when we talk about the things we're talking about. But tonight, we've come down in this lesson number four to judgment on the family. Judgment on the family. Is uh, or the Bible says that uh, those nations that have will not uh, mind God in Deuteronomy 28 there that there will be a curse on the family and you've heard it said and you know it's true so goes the family so goes the church mm -hmm. and so goes the church so goes the nation mm -hmm. amen? Yes. amen now so we're going to look at marriage tonight we're going to look at children tonight we're going to look at finances in other words we're going to look at the family okay as I said, America is not specifically mentioned in the Bible, but there are specific guidelines. Don't try to excuse what I'm saying because America is not specifically mentioned in the Scriptures because there are specific guidelines in the Bible for all nations. All nations. Look at Psalms 917. The wicked shall be turned into hell and what? 
all the nations that forget God. So we have to ask ourselves a question. Has America forgotten God? I'm trying. Working on it. Have we forgotten God in our policies? Have we forgotten God in our laws? Have we forgotten God in our behavior? Yes. Uh -huh. Deuteronomy 28, 15. Here's the warning. But it shall come to pass that thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So far, everything we've looked at, we see... The curse is on America mm -hmm. in the categories that we've looked at already, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll continue. It's, and he, he said, listen, they're going to pursue you. Look at verse 28, verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon you or come upon thee and shall pursue you. There ain't going to be no hiding from it, right? Mm -hmm. And overtake thee till thou be destroyed. That's when the wrath pour out. You see, there's... There's the judgments, the warnings, and then the wrath once the bowl is full, once God's cup is full. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. Now, let me say, this is up to God's people. It's up to God's people to reverse the curse. Yes. Mm -hmm. It ain't up to lost people. Unsaved people don't believe the Bible, you see. Amen. That's right. Sinners do what sinners do. Amen. Heathens do what heathens do. Amen. It's not up to the heathens. It's not up to the unbeliever. It's up to the believers, you see, if America's going to get uncursed and become blessed. You see, the church needs to get broken hearted, but the church is not broken hearted because the church don't see what's going on. So we asked ourselves the question, is it too little, too late? Is God's cup full? Second Chronicles 7, 14, look at it. If my people, now he's talking to Israel here specifically, but we have been engrafted into the nation of Israel, you see, by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have been made accepted into the beloved because of the blood of Jesus Christ. So he's talking to us. Christian means to be Christ-like. You see, so we are the Lord's people. He's talking to us in this verse, as well as what he was talking. Israel didn't listen, and look what happened to them. Right. right? So if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. He's not talking to lost people. He's not talking to people that don't know him. He's talking to his people. We'll humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and turn from your wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. And listen, I don't think we know how bad in sin the church is. I don't think we know how, how we have allowed sin into our hearts so gradually and how full we are of it. I really believe that with all my heart about me, mm -hmm. about myself. And he says... Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin. Now look at that. And will heal their land. I ask myself, is it too late? Is it too late? Is God's cup full? Is there no turning back? This instruction, Mr. Denise, is not to lost people. He's not calling lost people to pray and to humble themselves. He's calling us, mm -hmm. his people, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. And this verse is not a promise to lost people, although they would benefit if the church would get right. Mm -hmm. Just that these curses are on the land tells us that the church is not right. Amen. Amen? I, I'm not talking about you all. I'm talking about me, for one, right? I blame myself just as much as anybody else. The problem is... Now listen to this. Have you thought of this? The problem is, the problem is, I believe in America that there might be more lost people than there are saved people. <laughs> if you believe the polls on CNN, you'd have to believe that. Amen. <laughs> but look, I don't either. But anyway, I hear about it. Oh <laughs> yeah. Listen. Here's what I do know. 
There's a lot of people that don't believe the Bible in critical positions of power in America. Yes. Yes. There's a lot of people that do not believe the word of God in offices mm -hmm. that make a big difference in the policies and laws. Of Listen, I know that most of the news media is biased yep. against God. I know that. Yep. They show one side, one side. Listen, old Walter Conkite, Con Con Cron 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 thank you. Oh, Walter Cronkite, he used to say, this is a mirror. I'm going to show you a mirror of what's going on. He didn't offer his opinions. He didn't offer his views. This mm -hmm. is what's going on, you see. Okay. Not today, boy. Not today. we got to hear the opinions of all the news anchor people. And most of them lean, <laughs> lean toward, lean toward uh, being opposed to God and His Word, you see. So many of God's people seem to be slaves to a certain party, no matter what that party's policies are. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Listen, I cannot vote for a party that believes that abortion is not murder. Right. Amen. 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 And all in all, or that promotes sin right. and says it's not sin, no matter what the party is. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And too often we can't tell the lifestyle from somebody that says they're a Christian than those that are heathens. Yeah. Amen. These Amen. things ought not to be, my right. friends. Right. So the opposite of being blessed by God is to be cursed by God, to have a curse on us. And a curse is a, a remedial judgment. It is a warning that if you don't stop it, if you don't humble yourself, if you don't do right, then the wrath is coming. You're going to get destroyed. It's coming, you see. We don't think that can happen in America. Mm -hmm. We don't realize how late the hour is. Mm -hmm. We don't realize how bad a shape we are really in. Listen, we are not heeding the warnings. And the church just seems not to hear it. You see that when people come to our study sometimes on Sunday nights. I can see it on their face. They're not coming back because they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear the truth. You know, you, they just want somebody to tell them everything's going to be all right. That everything's good. Everything's going to be all right when we get to heaven, but we got a lot of hell to go through right here on this earth because God's people ain't doing right. That's the truth. And somebody needs to have enough guts and God to say it. Amen? Amen. Right. I think it's about time the church get mad at the devil again. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. I, I give you good news. Jesus died for us and we're going to heaven. But right now we're in trouble. Yeah. There's a lot of bad news yes. to talk about. And somebody needs to face up to it. Amen? Amen. I'm getting right, ready to ride down to Florida. I don't want to. I don't want to see what I'm going to see when I get down there, but I got to face up to it. Right. You see, we got to face up to what's really going on. And that's what we're doing as Aaron and her missionaries. Amen. Amen. So lesson four, cursed is the family. We're going to look at the family unit. The cur is it cursed? The biblical institution of marriage, is it cursed? The family's finances, are they cursed? The children, are they under a curse? Deuteronomy 28 talks about this. So the question is, are these judgments on America? And are they worse than they've ever been before? Is it like it's never been before? That's one of the signs, Matthew 24, 8. When you see that it's never like it's been before and it's getting worse and worse, then you know it's a sign of the Lord's return. Cursed is the family. Now, you cannot have a family that God can completely bless if it is not a biblical family, okay? Now, a family cannot start off biblical and can get biblical, right? Mom and dad can get saved and, and all that. I'm not saying that, but here's God's picture of a, and here's God's intent of the institution. God instituted the family. Not the Amen. devil, not the world, not man. Yeah. God did. Amen. So, And God has a plan for a biblical family. And when I get done explaining what I believe the Bible in its entirety te teaches us what a biblical family is supposed to be or could be, should be, I'm going to ask you, 
how many of you come from a family like that? I don't want you to answer, but here's what I know about the Bible and what it says about the family. When a little boy and a little girl is born, God would have it that they be born to a married husband and wife and that that husband and wife both be saved. Both of them be born again. Amen. 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 Baby, the kids need their mama and their daddy. And in order for a family to be a biblical family, the way God means for family to be, a man will keep himself pure until he is married. He will be a virgin when he gets married. He got saved when he was a teenager or when he was young, and he kept himself pure, you see. The woman... She will be, see, see, everybody's dragging all this baggage into our marriages, you see. Mm -hmm. And the woman the same. She got, she was born into a Christian family. She got to see her mother as a wholesome role model of a Christian, virtuous woman. And the boy, the same. And the boy got to see his dad faithful to his mother and treating his mother right, loving God, you see, hearing him pray at night. And keeping themselves under control, you see, in that way. So, so the virgin man that is a born again Christian and the virgin woman that's a born again, born again Christian come together in marriage and they have children that bring them up knowing the Lord from the earliest age. That is God's picture of a biblical family. How many of us came from a family like that? Very few. Very few. What's that tell you? What's that tell you? There's been a curse on the family for some time. For some time, you see. Huh? Yeah. You know I'm telling you the truth. God has instituted the family, not man. The biblical institution of marriage is under attack. Amen. Oh, it is been under been attack yes. for years. Progressive liberals in office will do anything for a vote. Yes. Anything. Our leaders are rewriting God's guidelines for marriage. The institution of the family is under attack in many ways in America. God woke me up in the middle of the night and showed me a few things I need to say right here. Mm -hmm. And I learned to get up and start writing them down. Before I start naming the many ways that God has attacked, or that the devil has attacked the family, I want to say something else to you. There's a story in the Bible. There's a story in the Bible where a woman was caught in the act of adultery. And all these self-righteous hypocrites bought this woman unto the Lord. Right. And started accusing her, and he just kind of stooped down and started writing in the dirt. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It didn't bring the do. Then while he was down there, he said, "Any of y'all that ain't sin, go ahead and throw the first rock." Mm -hmm. And you know what? You what happened? You started hearing rocks fall out of her hands. Yeah. Amen. 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 You see, when we carry signs to rainbow parades, mm -hmm. calling other people sinners, we are sinners. We're casting stones. Mm -hmm. Amen. Do we have a right? No. No, no. no you no. see. No. Listen, we do not cast stones of superiority to anybody. We're no better than anybody else. Amen. Amen. Our righteousness is the righteousness of God that's been imputed into us. We're all sinners. That's right. And when we want to hold up a sign or we want to say something mean to some other sinner, my friends, that is not God. That's not God telling us to do that. And that's why we're not winning. I know they're combative. I know combative. I know they're militant. But that don't give us the right to be. Maybe they're militant because we've been holding up signs like we're so much better than you. Amen. We're better off than you because we've been saved, you see. If you haven't. But we have no right to throw stones. When I got saved, it's because I fell under conviction of the Holy Spirit. As soon as I fell under the conviction of the Holy Spirit, I realized I was a sinner. That's why Jesus died, because I am a sinner. Amen. Because everyone has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 
Amen. We're all sinners. We're all in the same boat, you see. Right. Not only did I realize I was a sinner, but I realized everybody else was. But the problem we have today is that Satan has a lot of people believing that they're not a sinner. That's where the problem is. See, the same thing happened in the garden. Mm -hmm. Satan convinced Adam and Eve that God didn't mean what he said. Right. God decides what's sin and what is not. Not man. Right. Not man. God. God decides. Satan has rewritten the word of God just like he did in the garden of Eden. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not here to cast stones. I had to throw a stone at myself. Yeah. I'm here to throw you a rescue line. The same one the Lord threw me. Yeah. Right. Saved me out of the sea of sin. But you've got to confess. You've got to believe that you've sinned in order to see your need to receive the rescue line, you see. It's yeah. Satan that has you blind to the fact of your sin. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's right. The Bible says if you die in your sin, my dear friend, that you'll go to an everlasting torment in a place called hell. Right. God said that. I didn't. Mm -hmm. right. We don't want you to go there. That's why we're doing what we're doing. Amen? Amen. 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 The only way, you see, the only way to go to heaven is to is to die in Jesus Christ Amen. and therefore be made alive in His holiness. The only way to be born into Jesus is to admit that you're a sinner. And you don't want to admit you're a sinner because you want to continue in that pleasure of that sin. But may I warn you, my friend, that sin's pleasure is only for a season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then comes death. Yes. And then comes judgment. Yes. The result of people not believing in sin has been undermining and destroying the institution of the biblical family. Most of the problems we face today in America, if not all, I'm, I'm other nations, so, so I can't say all, but Sister Pam, most of the problems we face today in America has to do with the erosion of the biblical family. Amen. A biblical family is based upon a biblical marriage. Amen. Amen. It has many enemies. Many enemies. Now listen, again, again, if you came out of sin and your marriage was wrecked with sin and then you got saved, that's a biblical marriage. You got saved, right? Yes. Mom and dad got saved. Amen. Amen. And if your husband or your wife ain't saved, God said stay with them and pray for them as long as they'll stay with you. You get enough Jesus in you, they'll, they'll make a decision one way or another whether they want to stay or not. Some of the enemies of the Bible, biblical marriage are this. I ain't throwing rocks, I'm throwing a lifeline. Amen. Amen. First of all, cohabitation. The Bible calls it chambering. Chambering. I'm talking about living together without being married. Shacking up. We call it shacking up. I had that rope right there, Doug. Good job. And may I say, some of you girls are nuts for moving in with a guy without getting a ring and getting married. Amen. Amen. Chances are you'll never get married. Another enemy of marriage is divorce. Amen. Now when divorces started growing, the percentages of marriages uh, ending in divorce started growing in the 50s. Used to be like when it got up to 50%, Miss Debbie, in the world, the church was still like at 20%, 10%. But the gap as divorces started being more commonplace through the 60s and 70s and 80s, the gap between the world's statistics and the church's statistics grew together and now it's the same. Yeah. And seventy-five percent of all marriages in America end in divorce. That impact on the children is devastating. It's devastating enough for the husband and wife, but the impact on the children is devastating. Mm -hmm. Another enemy, another enemy to biblical marriage is abortion. 
Amen. It's abortion. I, there were some women on the news the other night suing uh, the government because they said abortion. They were Jewish, and our religion don't believe that you were a soul or you were a human being from the time of conception. And I said, well, honey, you need to read the Bible <laughs> that you say you believe. Because mm -hmm. that's where we learn that God knew us and God made us and God formed us mm -hmm. in the womb. He loved us in the womb. Another enemy, another enemy of biblical marriage is children being born out of wedlock. Amen. That's an enemy of, that, that hurts the children as far as their relationship with God. Right? People say, well, I've got, a, I've got a little girl, a little boy, we're five years old, me and the daddy's getting married next year. You got a little bit backwards. Amen? There used to be some shame attached right. to divorce and to burying a child out of wedlock. I ain't saying there ain't forgiveness, and I'm not looking down my nose at you, but that ain't the order of things that, that constitutes a biblical marriage. And somebody, somebody ought to bring it up every once in a while. Amen? Amen. 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 Yeah. Fornication, adultery, it's one of the, it's some of those sins that are not mentioned. Because the pastor, I had a pastor tell me, if I started preaching and get shacking up, fornicating and adultery, I wouldn't have any church left. That's right. Well, you'd have the ones left that love the Lord and want to do right, and the ones that want to find forgiveness. You'd be surprised how many people might repent if we say, thus saith the Lord. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. And then we come down to homosexuality. That's something that people's afraid to talk about in church. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. So let's look at Deuteronomy 28, verse 17 and 18. It says, Curse shall thy basket and thy store. We've talked about that. Here's what I wanted you to see. Curse shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land. Now look here. The increase of thy kind. And the flocks of thy sheep. I want you to focus on curse shall be the fruit of thy body and the increase of thy kind. Same sex marriage does not produce the fruit mm -hmm. of thy kind. Mm -hmm. There is no fruit of the body in a same sex marriage. Biblical family cannot exist in a same sex marriage. Mm -hmm. Same sex marriages are not sanctioned by God. I don't care who rewrites your Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Family cannot exist without making babies. Amen. Biblical family only exists with a saved man and a saved mama. Amen. That's a biblical family. That's right. That is why Satan is after our children and our grandchildren in our public schools. Mm -hmm. Books make a big difference. Textbooks make a big difference. Satan is after the hearts and minds of the children, you see. Books in school libraries and textbooks are now being directed to indoctrinate young children. Mm -hmm. Your children, our grandchildren, mm -hmm. you see. We don't have that kind of freedom under God to go against Him in what we teach our children. People say, it's a free country. You don't have that freedom. We don't have that freedom. There's got to be rules, even in a free country. Amen? Amen? Rebellion will bring chains of slavery like you've never seen before. It is working. You talk to your kids that go to public school. You talk to your grandchildren. And if you say that homosexuality is a sin, they'll tell you that you are a homophobe, mm -hmm. that you're homophobic. Mm -hmm. I'm not a bit homophobic. If a person wants to be a homosexual... That's between them and God. But I'm not going to say that it's not a sin, just like I'm not going to say that adultery is not a sin. Fornicating is not a sin. Lying is a sin. Stealing is a sin. Amen. You see? You hear kids say all the time, there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> that is not God telling them that. Amen. You reject the Word of God, you reject God. Public school system is ungodly. Forcing teachers to teach this abominational sin as truth. You, you see, we've kicked God out of the public schools. Mm -hmm. Did you know that up until 1947, the Bible was a school book, yeah. a textbook up till 1947? 
I'm getting ready to tell you something that's going to blow your mind. Look what we have in school now since we kicked God out. Yeah. Look, you look back in history and see how things has changed. Teenage pregnancy skyrocketing, drugs, violence, school shootings. <clears throat> the Bible used to be not only read, but studied and discussed in the public schools. And it exercised, whether people got saved or not, it exercised considerable influence upon the school children as they become adults in America. Mm -hmm. From the very beginning of English colonization, Bible reading and prayer was an important part of the classroom. I'm going to prove that to you. <clears throat> our founding fathers, our founding fathers clearly considered the Bible as a foundational school book for the public school system. Yes, they did. We know this from their personal writings and also by their official government proceedings of the colonial era. Yes. Do your homework. That's why Satan's trying to rewrite our history, you see. America's founding fathers never intended for the Christian faith to be pushed from the American classrooms or from the public arena in general. That's why we've fallen under this curse, because it has happened. Let me read you a few things. If y'all want to copy this, I'll get it to you. Noah Webster. Mm -hmm. Noah Webster, who is considered the father of American education, wrote in defense of the Bible as a school book. Listen to this. In my view, this is the father of the public education for America. In my view, the Christian religion is the most important and one of the first things in which all children under a free government ought to be instructed. Mm -hmm. Boy, that just makes the ACLU's toes curl, don't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? Listen to what else he said. Listen to his definition. Gary, you'll find this very interesting. Listen to his definition of the word education. He said, The bringing up as of a child, instruction, formation of manners. That's education. Yes. Huh? Formation of manners. Education comprehends all that series of instruction and discipline which is intended to enlighten the understanding, correct the temper, and form the manners and habits of youth and fit them for youthfulness, usefulness in their future stations. To give children, this is what education is supposed to be doing, to give children a good education in manners. Yes. Arts and science is important. To give them a religious education is indispensable. Amen. Indispensable. And an immense responsibility rests on parents and guardians who neglect these duties. I wish he'd run the schools today. Amen. Then there's a, little, there's a fella. Uh, his name is Fisher Ames. He is considered to be the author of the First Amendment, and he supported the Bible and public education. Listen to what he wrote. Why should not the Bible again or regain the place it once held as a school book? Its morals are pure. Its examples captivating and noble. The reverence for the sacred book that is thus early impressed lasts long. And probably, probably, if not impressed in infancy, never takes firm hold of the mind. He also said this, <clears throat> we have a dangerous trend beginning to take place in our education. We're starting to put more and more textbooks into our schools. We've become accustomed too late to putting little books in the hands of children containing fables and moral lessons. We are spending time in the classroom. We are spending less time in the classroom on the Bible, which should be the principal text in our schools. The Bible states these great moral lessons better than any other man-made book. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. 
And now listen to Benjamin Rush. He is the signer, one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. He also defended the use of the Bible as a textbook in the public schools. He said, if, if we were to remove the Bible from public schools, it's a founding father, we would be wasting so much time punishing crimes mm -hmm. and taking so little pains to prevent them. Mm -hmm. They knew what they was talking about. Yeah, yeah. They knew what they was talking about. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. See, it's for the same reason that the progressive liberals have taken, uh, taken over our public colleges and in many cases the private colleges, even those that call themselves Christian. Yeah. Amen. Amen. To indoctrinate our children and grandchildren against God and His Word is as to a biblical family. It's all about destroying the family, folks. Yeah. You destroy the family, you destroyed America. Whom will you believe? God or man? God. You can believe what they say on TV. I'm just going to go with God's Word. You can believe what your friends believe and be a follower. As for me and my household, we will stick to the blessed old book. Amen. You can go with Hollywood, but I realize that they are all about money and pleasure and do not know God or his word. I'll just stick with what God says. Amen. You can believe what you hear your favorite singer or entertainer say about God and His Word, and you can follow them all the way to hell if you want to, but I'm going to stick with the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life, because no one can come to God the Father except through God the Son. Amen? Amen. You can believe all of Satan's lies and enjoy the sins of Egypt for a season, but I will believe the one who died on the cross for the sin of the world. If God says it is sin, it is sin, no matter what you choose to believe, no matter what the world says. And one day real soon, my dear friend, one day real soon, you will see that I was right for being on God's side. And you will say, I'm glad that I was on God's side. Or you'll say, I wish I was on God's side. I pray you end up on God's side. Yes. Amen. One way to know America is under remedial curse of God is the institution of marriage is under attack and losing ground every day. The family is under a curse. Couldn't we say that? Amen to that. Amen. 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 Right. Secondly, the American family's finances. Finances are under a curse. This will be real quick. Deuteronomy 28, verse 17 and 18. Curse shall be thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Okay? I was looking at the curse on the basket and the store, the fruit of the land, and the flocks of thy sheep. Then he goes on in verse 30 of Deuteronomy 28. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. Be a lot of bankruptcy going on. Wages will not meet the prices of goods. People won't be able to afford to keep their houses. Inflation will be out of control. That's right. Huh? Starting. That's right now. Yeah. That's right now. Food prices seem like they doubled last week. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Deuteronomy 28, 38. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field and shall gather but little in, for the locusts shall consume it. Mm -hmm. if the, when a nation is under a curse... You can work your fingers to the bone and never get ahead. Never get on top. At the end of the week, the money's all gone. Amen? 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 Amen. Verse 39. Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. Retirement accounts being lost. Amen? 401ks dropping down to nothing. More and more people working for a few people to get rich. You see, that's what the progressive liberal wants because they want to push in socialism. 
They want you to depend on them so they can get rich. So they can be some of the few that are rich while you're depending on them to feed you and to house you, you see. That's when, listen, when, when, you, when you see people that are, that are eating better and living better that will not work. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about people that can work and won't work and the government's paying your rent and buying your food and they're living better than those that are working every day. Yes. Then my friends, that country has a problem. Mm -hmm. Benjamin Franklin said, and, and I'm not saying this word, before, word, but you'll know what I'm saying. He said, when the, when the voters learn how to vote, the coffers, in other words, the tax money into their own pockets, then you are done. You're done. And my friends, when there's more on the liberal side than there is on the Christian side, we need divine intervention real quick. Amen. Real quick. Amen. Deuteronomy 28, 40, and thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy coast, but thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil, for thine olive shall cast his fruit. Only the rich getting richer. And that's what you're going to see. If the curse is on, only those that have have the big money, we'll get richer and the poor just keep getting poor. There'll be a bigger, bigger gap between the rich and the poor. More and more Americans uh, not being able to afford to eat right. And like I've said already in this curse, if it was, or in this, uh, in this uh, sermon series on America in prophecy, if it wasn't for the government feeding people right now, with, with the welfare system and, and the things like that, uh, people would be starving in America right now. They wouldn't be able to afford to buy food, of course. They couldn't afford it before. They'd be starving to death. And I have found that a lot of people that are getting government assistance, God bless you if you need it. Mm -hmm. But I found them eating better than me. Right. And I've worked hard every day of my life. Amen. That ain't the way it ought to be, my friends. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says if a person won't eat or work, they ought not eat. Yeah. Somebody gets hungry enough, they'll go to work. Yeah. Deuteronomy 28, 42, All thy trees and fruit of thy land shall the locusts consume. Sounds like the economic effects of a COVID pandemic to me. Yeah. Our nation's debt will consume all our wealth soon. Yes. Very it can't soon. help it. It can't help it. Is America under the remedial judgments? She'll see the biblical family has a curse on it. Check that box. Mm -hmm. We'll see that the family's finances have a curse on them, no matter how hard you work. Check that box. And then lastly, and I'll be real quick, just a minute, America's children will have a curse on them. Amen. This is probably the most heartbreaking one of all. Yeah, Deuteronomy 28, 18, Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body. Who is that? That's your kids. Right. Mm -hmm. That's your grandkids. Verse 32, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thy hand. Thou shalt begot, verse 41, thou shalt begot sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. I experienced this for myself. I brought my kids up to know the Lord and to know the Lord Jesus, and they both got saved, supposedly. I hope they did. And watched my son get on drugs. And watched him get dragged into captivity. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Listen, this ain't like alcohol. This ain't like smoking right. weed, what we're dealing with today. You can take one pill, you can take one snort, and you're hooked for life. Yeah. Hooked yeah. for yeah. life. Yeah. And I longed for him. I longed to have him back. When, when he was a little boy, I can remember those little hands around my neck. And I still remember his little boy breath <laughs> and hugging my neck and the plans I had for him. It wasn't my plan for him to get strung out on drugs. Mm -hmm. And you have to cut them off or they'll use all your money. Yes, you see. They get mad and quit talking to you when you won't give it to them. And they're taken off into captivity and given to another people and you're powerless to bring them back. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Thank God. I was not powerless because I could pray. Amen. Because I could pray and I prayed and God brought my son back. Amen. He's been sober Amen. now for three or four years. Amen. I know at least three years and I've got my son back. 
God can do it. But listen, what we got going on in this country is straight out of the pits of hell. The chains of sin, my friends. Fentanyl. Fentanyl is the most powerful synthetic man-made opiate known to man. It is similar to morphine. We used to hear uh, morphine and uh, you know what, what morphine does. But this synthetic fentanyl is 100 times more powerful. It's used for pain medication. You see? 100 times more potent. It is associated with the most overdoses in the United States. I'm bringing this up for a reason. It's being smuggled through the open door policy of this current administration into the United States from Mexico. Drug dealers mix it with other drugs to make them stronger and cheaper. 42% of fentanyl pills are lethal. Mm -hmm. One kilogram of fentanyl has the potential to kill 500,000 people. And it's poured into America by the millions. By the means. Overdoses are up almost 40% this year, and 55.6% of those are because of fentanyl. The DEA has seized over 10 million fentanyl pills across the U.S. in just four months. 10 million, or 10 million fentanyl pills, with an additional 980 pounds of power from May to September. That's just the ones they caught, yeah. right? And it's usually just the top of the barrel. Yeah. That's enough. For 36 million legal, uh, lethal do doses. Mm -hmm. 36 million. And now they come looking like this. Yeah. And all you gotta do is touch it. Yeah, all you gotta do is touch it. Really? Yeah, it yeah. goes through the skin. Yeah. I've seen cops on TV mm -hmm. where they've arrested somebody and touch it. And fall out. Fall out. Mm -hmm. Die. You have to have gloves and everything else. What you, what you see here, my friends, is Satan. Trying to get our children yes, yes. here with Halloween and everything coming up. Oh, yeah. Good Christian ought to be participating in that anyway. Amen. 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 But anyway, look at that. China is behind it, my friends, yes. as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we just go on like it ain't happening. Mm -hmm. We just go on like it. How bad does it have to get, get before the church gets broken hearted? Huh? How long does it have to get before somebody says something's going on here? We can't keep going on like this. We can't stand it. Our country can't stand it. But listen, even if it's too late for America, it's not too late for you. That's right. It's Jesus died for you. Amen. And my friends, I believe that it may be too late for America because I don't think America is going to repent and turn to God like he demands. But it's not too late for you. The only hope you have is a bloody Savior. You say, that's an offense to me. It should be. Mm, yeah. Because it's your sin and mine that caused it. Amen. Every lash on him, yep. right. we deserve, not him. Okay, we're sin. He hung there because he's seen you in the future. 2,000 years ago, he seen you. And he loves you. Yes. He don't love me or anybody else more than he loves you. He would have hung there if he was the only lost person yes. that ever lived. Yes. He's your only hope. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Won't you come to him? Won't you come to him right now and repent of your sin? You think you can't overcome it, but with his power in you, you can. You can. He will through you. Won't you just come and repent and believe on him? Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, God, we pray you'd break the hearts of the church that we might begin to pray and realize how far into sin we've slid, how far into disobedience and rebellion we have slid. God, help us. Help us to realize what sin is in our own heart and repent and be more like you. Lord, we pray for that one right now that's under conviction and don't feel that they can overcome their sin on their own. Lord, help them to know that that's indeed right. They can't, but the helper will come. If they repent and believe on you, that you'll come live in them and you'll change them from the inside out and make them fit for glory through your blood. Please, we ask it in Jesus' name. 
Amen. 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 God bless you, beloved.